given f of x equals x squared plus 2x and g of x equals 6 minus x squared, find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g. And then for each one of them, we have to determine the domain for each function in interval notation. Okay, so I set up the four parts here, f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g. And, well, first off, what, what does this really mean, right? So with these, we are just manipulating functions, and we are either going to be adding two functions together, subtracting two functions from each other, multiplying and dividing. So this is all of your operations in which you can do with functions. Now here are your two functions. Function one is f of x, and then the other function, function number two, is g of x. So we're just going to be taking those two functions and putting them together depending on you know what the operation is, and then we're just going to solve. So the first thing you have to figure out is go down to our memorize this uh, box. You have adding functions, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. Now you see how there's two different types of notation. For the first one where they said f plus g, that's this one, f plus g. And then they have to say what the input is. They're saying that it's x. And for all of these, for our function number one and two, they're both x values. So I'm just going to stick in here that they're all x values or what we're dealing with here. So now for the first one, for adding functions, you can simplify this. If ever you see f plus g, or two functions being added to each other, just know that it's f of x, the first function, plus the second function, g of x. So I'm gonna write that down. So instead of knowing it like this, it's equivalent to saying f of x plus g of x. That makes it simpler, I think. Because now, what was f of x? Oh, f of x was this. Okay, so f of x was x squared plus 2x. And what is g of x? Well, g of x is 6 minus x squared. So we have to plus. So plus 6 minus x squared. And now all we got to do is simplify. So let's see, do I have any like terms here? I got an x squared from the first function and a minus or a negative x squared. So they, boop, boop, cancel. And now you're left with just the resultant. Um, here, it would be 2x plus 6. And this equals, you could either say f plus g of x and put parentheses here, or you could say f of x plus g of x, but it's the same exact thing. If you want to even simplify this further, you can pull out a 2, then it would be x plus 3, but either way is the right answer. Um, and then I'll just write it, you know, this way, just so that you guys can see two different ways. And that would be the first answer. Now, all we got to do is find out interval notation. Now, the trick to interval notation and to finding the domain in interval notation, because that's basically what we're solving for, we have to solve for the domain. Um, first things first, if you have trouble with learning domain, go back to our domain playlist. It's on the home page. We have tons of videos for you there if you need a refresher. This, since we already taught domain, um, it's going to kind of be, you know, fast forwarded. But always take your domain from your initial function that you made. This one. Because sometimes there's little tricks. Sometimes you could cancel stuff out, but you still have to include it in your domain. Now, what we had was x squared plus 2x plus 6 minus x squared. You think to yourself, now remember with domain, you think, are there any numbers in which I, you know, have to exclude to that in you know in which that this function doesn't make any sense but usually that happens with square roots or any kind of root um or fractions this is just straight up all numerator right this is all over one 
So there's no restrictions here. Remember, you're only supposed to watch out for, like, the trick is square roots and fractions. So since there's no restrictions here, there's any number that I could plug in for x and have it turn out as an actual number, in which you won't get in trouble. So, literally, this would be from negative infinity. Your domain is all numbers in the negative direction and all numbers in the positive direction. That's the infinity sign, this like little sign right here. Now, infinity is a concept, so it's not really an actual number. Therefore, we have to exclude it. And excluding an interval notation is parentheses. So just know, if you have parentheses that's excluding, I'm just going to write it up here. If you have brackets, that's including numbers. But since... Infinity doesn't really exist, it just exists in theory. You have to put those parentheses, and that would be your domain for the first part. That's the answer to the first part. Let's go to the next one. So now we're just going to be doing the same exact thing, but now subtracting. So going down to our memorizing this, subtracting functions is just f of x minus g of x. So I'm going to write that, f of x minus g of x. And then just plug it in. f of x was x squared plus 2x. And now we have to minus my g of x. Now in this case, I'm going to put it in parentheses because I want to hold everything together. Because look what happens when you minus by something that's in parentheses. You have to distribute. This is technically a negative 1 multiplied by that. So it would turn out to be x squared plus 2x minus 6 plus x squared. See that? You just got to be a little tricky. Now remember, this is the initial. Use this for when we do our domain. But then you can simplify to get the uh, function of f of x minus g of x. So let's see. Now I'm going to add these two together. I got an x squared and an x squared. So that's 2x squared. Nothing really else that I can uh, combine. So just plus 2x minus 6. If you want to simplify it anymore, you can pull out the 2s. And it would be x squared plus x minus 3. Either or, those answers are both going to be equal to f of x minus g of x or f minus g of x. So I will do this one. Doesn't matter though. Now let's do domain. Go back to the original one, just in case, because there are times that they, they try to trick you up. But this is just a numerator. There's no denominators. You gotta watch out for that. There's no square roots. This is just all over one. So once again, as before, I could plug in any number into these x values and I will get an outcome that is actually a real value. So once again, there's no restrictions here. So negative infinity, oh gosh, <laughs> negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, that's interval notation, but since infinity doesn't really exist, it's only in theory, I have to put parentheses around it. And that is your domain. Perfect. Moving on. Multiplication, f times g of x. So multiplying functions... It's basically just saying f of x times g of x. So I will write that f of x times g of x. And now, same exact thing. Well, what was f of x? f of x was x squared plus 2x. All of this needs to be multiplied by g of x, which was 6 minus x squared. Ah, this is like your foiling stuff, right? Where you have to be fair and you have to multiply distributively uh, for every term. So the x squared gets multiplied by the first term and the second term. The second term of the first one will get multiplied by the first and the second one. So working with the first term first of x squared times 6 and then by a negative x squared, you should get... 6x squared, x squared times 6 is 6x squared, x squared minus x squared multiplied by each other is a negative x to the fourth, 
That's the end for the first term. And now, go for the second term. You got plus 12x, 2x times 6 is 12x, and then do the last distributing. So 2x times a negative x uh, to the second would be negative 2x to the third. This is the one without simplifying, so hold that off and use that for your domain. And then just see if you could, you know, make it clean and tidy and maybe we could put some like terms together, but it looks like we can't. I have an just an x here, an x squared, an x to the third, and an x to the fourth. So you can't really do much with that. The only thing that we can do is put it into... Um, uh, what's that word called? Standard, where you have your highest exponent first, then comes the second highest, and then comes x squared, and then finally 12x. So this would be if we multiply them together. Now, for the domain, go back to your original. No exclusions here. They're all in the numerator. I can plug in any number, whether it's negative or positive, and I would get an actual number, right? This is all over one, so there's no denominator I have to work with. So same exact idea, negative to infinity all the way to positive infinity, parentheses, because infinity doesn't really exist, and that is your domain. There's no exclusions. Last but not least, okay, this one for a domain we're probably going to have exclusions, but don't quote me on that. The only reason why I say that is because I have a division sign. So I'm going to have stuff that's in the denominator. That's when it like shoots out to you like, okay, we, we have exclusions here. But let's see. Dividing functions, you're just taking the one function and dividing it by the other one. So this is the same thing as saying f of x over g of x. f of x was x squared plus 2x over g of x was 6 minus x squared. Hold this one um, to do your domain. And now we try to see if we can simplify anything. Well, uh, it looks like I could pull out an x from the top. I have x's in both uh, numbers here, right, or variables. So I can pull out an x, and then it would just be x plus 2 over 6 minus x squared. You can't really simplify the bottom, so uh, that would be the end for this. So this is f of g of x. Or you could put the other notation. It's up to you, whichever one you want. So this is the answer for that. And then we just got to do the domain. Now this one, there's going to be exclusions because I have a denominator. Remember, the exclusion is that your denominator cannot be a zero. So you got to find an x value in which you would get a zero value. So I'm going to bring it up to the top here. 6 minus x squared cannot equal 0, right? So basically, you want to solve for the x in which it is equal to 0 because then we would know that's the number that we can't use. So if I just pull the x squared over, it would be 6 equals x squared. Solve for x, you take the square root of both sides. So we have x equals rad 6. That is the exclusion guy. This is the number that I cannot have in my domain. Not included in domain. So if it's not included, it's an exclusive number. So I have to use parentheses. So I'm going to go from all the way from negative infinity all the way up until rad 6. Now, I can't include negative infinity because it's a theory number, and I can't include rad 6 because that will equal to 0 in the denominator, so I put another parentheses. And now you're saying we're moving on, so you use a u for interval notation. That means or. Now, continue on. That's the only break, so I'm going to keep writing with that. And you know what? I'm just going to kind of pull this 
down here just so that I have more room. Open parenthesis. Rad 6 all the way now to positive infinity. And positive infinity, I have to put a parenthesis because I'm excluding that as well. But this is your domain. Do you see that? Hopefully you do. So practice with your domains, guys. If you have a denominator, the exclusion is for fractions, you can have that denominator equal zero. So that's why we had to solve for it, just to see which number will give us zero. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If it did, click that like button. And if you want to see more math videos, click the subscribe button. It will help us out tremendously. And I thank you so much. I will see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.